Chapter 1. Launch Cassius Canix was a seemingly simple man, an honest man, a thoughtful man, a strong man, and, just generally speaking, a man's man, through and through. A straight shooter all the way, or a no-nonsense man, is how some would describe him. Family was always important to Cass. He loved his children, Lydia and Lance, and his wife, Melina. Cass was a very happy man, for the most part. He didn't really like his job much, but work was work, and Cassius Canex worked in an office where he mostly composed emails and crunched numbers on spreadsheets. One day, he thought, a change in career would happen. In fact, he believed it to be inevitable. Melina was stunningly beautiful with soft features, pale complexion, and a petite frame that she kept very toned with her intensive yoga regimen and strict diet. Her hair was thick and luxurious, with a dark and shiny appearance. She was very passionate about her job as an elementary school teacher. Her nights often would consist of marking her students' assignments and planning future lessons. At 13, Lance was beginning to change into the man Cass had always hoped he would. Already standing at 5 foot 10 inches, Lance was sure to reach well over 6 foot like his dad. Lance was into sports, video games, and he enjoyed fishing with his dad, as they often would do being so close to the water and all. Sometimes Lance and his dad would pack a lunch and go out on the water for hours on end, rarely coming home empty-handed without a catch. Pike and bass were the most common, but Lance had more luck than his dad did at catching the elusive pickerel, which was the most sought after of all the fish due to its tastiness. Lydia was 16 now. God, how time flies, Cass would think. Cass loved his son Lance, but there's definitely a special place in the hearts of men for their precious daughters. Lydia was a specimen of perfection, with model-like features through and through. One hot summer day, Lydia and Melina were out on the deck talking, and from within the house, through the dining room window, Cass stopped to gaze in amazement as he watched his stunningly beautiful daughter smile and adorable mannerisms. Cass took some photos of her at that moment to capture the memory. He later showed the photos to Melina while Lydia rolled her eyes in the background. Lydia worked at a hotel cleaning rooms. She didn't mind the work, and she really loved the income she received, which helped pay for her expensive wardrobe. She loved her music and enjoyed spending time with friends. Lydia and Lance had a great sister-brother relationship as well, unlike many other siblings, it seemed. The family pets consisted of Stump the Cat and two dogs, Minotaur and Tripod. Stump the Cat was great at keeping the mice at bay. Minotaur was the guard dog and kept watch on the Canex house. Tripod was named so due to being a three-legged dog. To round off the pets, a cleanly kept aquarium of cichlids resided in the man cave. The Canex residence was situated in a remote wooded area on the outskirts of the city making long commutes for sure. But Cass wouldn't have it any other way, for Cass loved the country and the seclusion it afforded him. Melina, did you hear what happened in the city? No, what? Some guy was trying to rescue a cat from a tree just as a storm was rolling in, and he got struck by lightning and died. Oh my, Mel said. Strangest thing though, it wasn't the lightning strike that killed him. You see, when the lightning hit, he fell out of the tree he had climbed and landed on the road. But the fall didn't kill him either. Instead, it was a speeding fire truck that happened to be passing that very spot just as the man landed from the tree. And I haven't even gotten to the strangest part of the story yet. Get this, the house that was on fire that the firemen were en route to belonged to the same man that ended up being killed. Isn't that crazy? Oh, Cass, that is nuts. I know, eh? Boy, that cat really had it in for him. Don't you get any ideas, Stump. Ha ha, you are one strange man, Cassius. I know, Melina. I know. What do you feel like for supper tonight, Melina? I was thinking about doing a barbecue. Okay, Cass, that sounds good. 
Maybe fish and salad? Okay, Mel. I'll pick up some on the way home after I pick up Lydia from work and Lance from Jesse's house. Sounds good, Cass. Alrighty then. Fish it will be. Later that day, Cass thought about the man that got hit by the fire truck. Destiny seemed more plausible than fluke accident. Cass often thought about Destiny as he had a feeling that it was right at his doorstep, but never permitted to enter for some unknown reason. One day, Cass dreamed. One day. The fish tasted particularly good that night, Cass thought. Hey, Mel, what did you put in the fish? It tastes amazing. Just some lemon pepper and lime juice with a bit of butter. Oh, wow, it is scrumptious. Don't you guys think? Yes, Daddy. Yeah. Hey, Lydia, Lance, did you guys hear about the guy in the city who was killed the other day? No, what happened? Oh, boy, not this story again, Melina chuckled. Well, you see, he was killed rescuing a cat, but what killed him was a fire truck that was on its way to put out a fire at his house. Coincidence or destiny? Oh, Daddy, that is crazy. Maybe Stump will try to get you killed like that, eh, Dad? That's hilarious, Lance. That is exactly what I told your mother when I told her the story. Oh, boy. Okay, everyone. I'm hot, so I'm just going to jump in the pool. Don't look, because I'm going to be naked, okay? Oh, Mom, why can't you put a bathing suit on? I just want a quick dip. You guys can clear the table while I'm gone. Life is strange, Cass thought, as he cleared the table. The kids, now downstairs already, playing video games. He continued to think about the plans for the rest of the Saturday. Maybe a bonfire, followed by a movie. And with that, Cass walked outside down the long drive to the gate, which he quite liked, and as he shut and locked the gate, a calm sense of security came over him. No one is coming in the driveway now, ha ha. But no sooner did he get out the second ha when a truck pulled up to the gate. It was getting dark now, but Cass could see the truck had four rough-looking characters in it, and he didn't get a good feel about it. As he walked back towards the locked gate, he got a glimpse of what one of the men was doing. Oh God, is that a gun?